everyone, Angela here. How are you? A very warm welcome to my channel and so good to see you visiting me here again. I am going to be doing something with fabric today, so I'm really excited about that. Fabric and lace. Um, so I'm going to ask you to come and follow along, grab that cup of coffee or tea and come and watch or craft along with me. All right, so we're going to be working. I've got my first signature out here and I'm loving how this is coming together. It's almost at an end. Um, and I have got uh, a little bit of a exciting pocket that I'm going to put in to the this page over here so it's this lovely um sage green polka dot page and this is a tea stain page and it's opposite the one that we did with a flip out over here all right so that's what i'm going to work on today um so this is a very lightly stained tea stain i've used a digital for this if you don't tea stain pages or don't like to some people don't and what i decided i wanted to brighten this up a bit and i'm going with a vintage look here today so what I've done is I've taken a piece of fabric. So this is some vintage fabric, um, some lovely colors that match with what I'm working with. So we've got the pinks, the creams, the very light greens and that sort of thing. Um, and this piece measures um, five inches this way or 12 and a half centimeters and six and a half inches this way, which is 16 and a half centimeters. There or thereabouts, all right. Depends on the size of your page, but you want to have something with um, sort of a half an inch border on each side here, and I've got about an inch on, on, on the top and the bottom. That's the base piece that I'm gonna use. Now I'm gonna move this out the way because this is the size we need. So I'm just gonna put that over there. Um, and I love this, beautiful roses. And then I have gone and cut up one of my tray cloths. It's a vintage tray, well, it's an antique tray cloth, or vintage, somewhere along there. Um, it is stained on, on uh, got a bad stain, so don't, uh, it, I didn't feel bad about cutting it up because you would never use this as a tray cloth. So I've taken one of the corners and cut out a piece you know, just about the same size here. Now I've chosen this because it's got lace and a little bit of embroidery here. Um, and I've sort of just matched up the various sides. Now you can um, take some of the bits off on the side here. I am going to stitch this. And if you don't have a sewing machine, you can hand stitch it because that's, you know, what they used to do back in the day, didn't they? Well, not this time, but, you know, people, people didn't always sew with machines and that just adds another little element to it i think and lots of texture so um i've got this bit here and as i say i'm going to end up stitching it there and there just on those sides and um maybe glue a bit there because i don't want to stitch on the lace so that's the first thing but before i do that i'm going to fold this piece back like this and make it into a type of a pocket so um i'm just looking how i did this yeah that is the right side now i was fortunate that the so the sewing on both sides here is pretty much the same so i wanted to get the right side of the lace showing now that is the right side that's the underside so really what i should do is i should do it like that but um, with mine being so close on either side and I'm going to put something here, it didn't really matter. So um, just have a look. If you've got a piece that's got hand embroidery, you might find that you do need to have a very specific side. So I've turned this down. We've got a, a sort of a one and three quarter inches or four centimeters on that side um, there. And then I, when I sew this, I will match those bits up and then it must just touch at the top there so that's going to be where you're going to have your actual pocket now remember i asked you to keep hold of any trinkets brooches or any old jewelry this is a piece of old trinket it's like a, a costume jewelry um thing and it's a brooch and i have just um used it here i had some other ones but they were more silvery so i wanted something that would sort of blend in here because the silver didn't really work um so this is an old vintage brooch um and it's got uh, i'm going to use this to pin this lace down onto the underside here so the flap um, and then i've just put on um, a silk ribbon here 
uh, which comes from, well, it's faux, faux silk ribbon, comes from Plum Boutique. So I've just tied a ribbon onto this bo this brooch here. If you can't tie it onto your brooch, you can um, stick it onto the, the a piece or just tuck it underneath. So it's up to you, you know. So um, I've got the pin here and I'm going to just uh, hold this. And I wanted to um, get this, I think, about here. So I'm going to just hold this in place and just tuck this right through. You can see I tried it earlier. I was trying to find out where's the best place. And then I'm going to just do this. This is going to make it easier before I sew this down, um, just to do it before. All right, so now we've got a little bit of a, a bit there. And um, let me just see if that's where I want it. Um, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. I think I'm happy with that. It's got a little bit of a, a messy stitching bit there where they've joined the lace by hand. So the bow and everything is going to just cover it perfectly. So I'm quite happy with that. All right. So what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to go stitch down there and I'm going to go stitch across there and I'll see you back here in a moment so you can see I've just made a, a stitched up to there and there um, and now I'm going to just use my fabric tack which is a fabric glue as you know so use what you have on that front and I want to just stick down um, the lace over here it's no good stitching over it because it's too delicate so it's just gonna this is the easiest way to do this so just sticking that down there and then i also didn't stitch over this piece here so i just want to put some glue on this side as well just to adhere that down okay so we've got that all sorted right so coming along nicely this is gonna um hopefully it's got a little bit of a fray edge but i like that i like that and i'm not worrying about that there because we're going to cover it now all right, so we've got everything in place. I just want to lift the, the ribbon bits up. I think what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to get this stuck into the book. All right, so we've got the belly band on that side and we had that on that side. Now um, I want to do it on this side. So I'm going to just turn that out like that. And um, we're going to get it down on here. Now, um, as I said, you want about an inch on each side here. I'm going to move it up a bit because I'm going to put on some lace. So before I stick that down, I've got a piece of lace. Um, it's like a crochet capure lace. I'm going to stick that down um, over here. And I'm just gauging the distance. And I'll end up putting this one on top there. I uh, don't want to cover up that little bit of embroidery, so I'm just gauging where I want it first. Now, my little trick is, and you know, <laughs> is when I've worked out where I want it, I just like to draw a bit of a pencil mark. We, you won't see it, but then I know where I need to be. All right, so I can put my lace to the side quickly. going to grab my um, fabric tack again. I think it's easier just to put it onto the paper. So I'm going to do that rather than battle. Um, so we'll do this in a bit of a process. There we go. And then we'll tackle it on this side as well. Now I've got my line here, which is great. And so I can see where I need to be with that. Don't want to make your glue too thick either. And you can always go around and touch up with it um, on little bits like over here you might think I can need a bit over there so I can stick that down so just take your time and um, you know do it carefully bit by bit and then we turn that around and now we can see over here where we haven't put any glue there we go so that was easy Okay, now you don't want too much glue either if you've got a thin piece of fabric. Um, I think I've got pretty much everywhere. Now you could have made a pocket behind there as well, but I think this is just a delicate piece and I'm going to just have it with a one pocket. So we're going to move that over like that. And now all of this is nicely stuck down on the line so we can't go wrong. 
Okay, so now it's time to take these two little bits of lace. This is five inches across, so that's, and I got this from Plum Boutique, as you guys know. So I'm going to just put some glue just over the end here. And I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm going pretty thin with the glue on the paper. Okay, and then we can get that stuck on there nicely. So I think that's sort of where I want it. Like that. Yeah. And now wherever I see that I need a little bit more, I'm just going to do it a little bit like this. And you can touch that down. So rather, uh, you know, do it carefully and don't have gluey splotches on your paper. And then it works perfectly. And the last one here. There we go. So we've got that one down. So I'm quite liking that. It's coming together perfectly. Right. And now some cotton crocheted lace in this beautiful blush color sort of just picking up the colors here. So I'm going to just put this on top of this piece because I didn't really like this piece <laughs> in this particular application. Right, so we've got that there nicely. And you definitely want to leave this page open to dry once you are completed. So I'm just mindful of the little loops at the gentle, the soft little loops at the top there, ever so delicate. So that's what we have. And gosh, that's looking lovely. I really like that. Okay, so, so far so good. Right, a few decorations. So we've got our little ribbon hanging down here. And I like that. Um, and I've got some little flowers here. So this one came from Hobbycraft. And these two here came from Plum Boutique. And I've got the packet here. So if you go to Plum Boutique, you'll see that they've got um, these little beautiful flowers. They're perfect um, in lots of colors. And they've got a beautiful one that's pink and cream, which is I've ordered, but I haven't received. So I've, I've used this one. And now it's just a case. I did actually want them over here by the scrolly bit like that. So I wanted to just arrange those like that over there. And then this can hang down. Um, it was that or put them on the other side. So, um, you know, we could do that as well. Maybe better over there. Um yeah, I think I'm going to put them over here. We've got that little scroll, so let's not waste any time. Okay, so I'm going to put lots of glue on this just to make sure that they adhere. Now, these are paper flowers, um, and I'm sure um, you can get them anywhere. Um, I know I've got a couple on my Amazon for some of these as well. So, But go and have a look at Pamela Teak. Um, if you're ordering ribbon um, and they're very reasonable as well so and good quality because that's the other thing that are often they're not good quality right so we've got all of that there okay so I'm loving that that's looking gorgeous loving it okay so we're happy with that I was going to put on a little sentiment but I don't think that I'm going to do that I was going to put on this over here but I thought it just didn't go with all the lace and everything and I don't want to bring paper into it so I'm not doing it <laughs> you'll be glad to know right so we've got our little pocket made and then what I've done here is just to talk you through taking this postcard from my um, ephemera kit for the to have and to hold kit I've put on a tab over there as you can see I always back my ephemera with the lacy paper because I just love it I've put it in an eyelet and I've made a double bow. You've seen me make these double bows before. You make a little bow and then with the tails you make another bow. All right, so I've used that variegated, that's silk ribbon from Plum Boutique. It's variegated and I thought that was perfect to go into this pocket here. So we've got that over there. And then I've taken this little photographic cabinet card that's part of the kit as well. And I have made this little bit at the top there. It was a bit neutral, so I wanted to do something. So what I've done is I've taken um, one of these little lace pieces. I've cut it off and I've cut off the edging as well. Um, and I've stuck that down, first of all. Um, 
and then I've taken one of the little flowers and stuck it on top of that and that just gives it a little bit of excitement there really all right so that's what I've done there and that's the page so we are now ready to put that back into our um, journal so I'm going to do that and there we have it how beautiful is that it looks so romantic <laughs> well I think it does all right, and there's a lot more you could do to this. I mean, you could put on some buttons, which, you know, I might end up doing that, especially these shell type, antique type buttons. I've got, Shiroz so, sh let me think, Shirovsky crystal antique buttons as well, the glass ones. I mean, there's lots of bits that you could do. You could add more detail on this. So, you know, um, it's all up to you. Yeah, I like things in threes so you know I might end up adding a little bit more detail here something like that um, but I will stitch some thread through those first so you could do whatever you want I mean there really is the sky's the limit here okay everyone that was a quick little video I hope you've enjoyed it lots of fun and easy to make go grab those vintage um damaged joilies or tray cloths or tablecloths you know the ones that have holes in or stains give them a new life um and i think it's going to look perfect in your journal so thank you so much for spending time with me today i hope to have my um new kit out this weekend i'm just working on the last bits so look out for that um and i will let you know as soon as it's ready i'm just not sure if i'm going to make it for saturday it might have to be sunday or you know well anyway i'll let you know so thank you very much and i look forward to seeing you uh, again in the very next video bye bye everyone